I feel the cool breeze. It's such a lovely tea. Welcome everybody to our Pasca paint party. We're so glad you're here and we're doing something really cool today. Before we jump into that though, I want to let you all know we have one more paint party this year after today and that will be next week. And next week we're painting dragons, so don't miss that. Um, and I also want to let you know that last week's winner of the Posca paint giveaway was Fiona. And Fiona, they already shipped to you. Fiona's in New Zealand, so it might take a while to get there. Wow. But we did send it. I wish we'll, I was going to New Zealand. I love New Zealand. <laughs> Um, and I just want to let you know, after next week, which is our last Posca paint party for a while, we are going to do some giveaways in December. So make sure you're following us on Instagram at Brophy Art Academy. That's where we're doing our giveaways. Yeah, we'll be giving away stuff all the way till Christmas. So um, hopefully everybody gets to win something and get some paint pens. So let's talk about what we're doing tonight. I'll yeah. let you take over and I'm going to go back into my little control. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really happy to uh, do something fun tonight and really uh, inspire everyone like I've been inspired uh, through my travels. Uh, so I got some kind of cool music of an Indian flute. And what we're going to be doing today is uh, Hopi Kanchina masks. And if any of you know where I live, I live in San Clemente, California, and um, I explore a lot of the Southwest. Uh, I paddled all the way down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon, which is the Hopi uh, Mesa, and the Navajo Nation is right there. Um, it's also where the Zuni Indians were, uh, the Pueblo, Anasazi um, culture was all in here. And so through our travels, we've been able to go to so many uh, ancient sites like Mesa Verde, Chaco Canyon, uh, Hoban's Weep. And as an artist, you just can't help but be inspired by this beautiful art. Let's just get my microphone closer. Good. I just, for some reason, I wasn't All right. But so um, hopefully all of you have maybe uh, Googled uh, the Hopi Indians. And um, real quick, I just want to show you, I was right before this, I was working on my uh, project from last week, uh, our Ouroboros. So mine came out pretty cool. And if Maria's back there, Maria, can you go to uh, the overhead? Yes. And so I have my book here. And these are all Hopi Kachina dolls. And they have all these like cool faces. And what's great about any indigenous culture it seems like everything was about art. You know, they decorated everything. And um, whenever I'm in one of these places, I'm just amazed by number one, all the art, the textiles, the pottery, uh, the stories. And um, really though, look at this one, this one's like crazy. But there's one in particular that I like, uh, which is the sun god. And that's the one I'm going to be painting today. But there's hundreds of these. There's all kinds of different um, little characters that they make and they've etched on rocks and they've wove, woven into things. And what's really crazy is all the geometric patterns. Like you can see the ones on this face here. And um, some of them are just so, uh, uh, just, some of them are scary, some of them are happy, but some of them are just so off the wall, like this guy right here with a hand on his face. And these things are really old, these ideas. Um, these ones are probably pretty modern. They still make these. Um, but whenever you go to one of these places, the jewelry, the textiles, the pottery is just everywhere. And it's just a great way to be inspired. Um, Maria, if you have some of the the uh slides that we have available yes so i'm going to share with you some slides and there again folks this is to in really inspire you and get your creative juices going uh this photo is uh some some kids that are dressed up in uh the traditional ways and then this is a uh, picture of a hopi and indian woman and what i like about this is uh you notice her hairstyle if any of you know the movie Star Wars, I can't help but think that Princess Leia's hairstyle was uh, copied after uh, this Hopi Indian woman's hair. 
and this was like a traditional style. So when I go to these places, I notice that and I see how it's like captured within our culture now and it's inspired artists over the years. Um, and it's not just the Hopis, it could be uh, the Juanichos in Mexico or the Aztecs. It could be uh, Papua New Guinea, the, those native people there or the Aborigines in Australia. Um, a lot of these people did rock art. Um, keep clicking through these, Maria. Okay, hang, hang on. It's a little bit of a weird technical thing, so you're gonna have to be patient with me. All right. But I'm gonna stop share and then go to the next photo in just a second. Right. But what I want everybody to get out of this is art, it seems in all of these cultures was everywhere. It was in their buildings, in their clothes. Uh, it was just such a big part of their life. And, you know, art like is that way to me, like look at these uh, textiles. So when they made a basket, they just didn't make a plain basket. They did art with the basket and it was a lot of work. And, um, but it had to make it more enjoyable and creative. Same with the pottery or this, uh, this wall hanging here. And that's the, uh, the sun kachina in the center of this uh, uh, tapestry here. Keep going through, Maria. Okay, hang on. But it's, it's also the geometric shapes, the patterns, um, all of this. A lot of you probably recognize uh, some of the blankets and things that you see in the Southwest. You got that? Here we go. Got another one coming. All right. So this is the the sun uh, kachina. And this one we see all over the Southwest. Um, and it's really cool because they had the feathers as the rays and then the little face. And uh, I started noticing this in a lot of art around Southern California and the surf culture. And so some of the surfers must have ventured in those same places as I did and then picked it up and brought it back. Um, keep scrolling through these. There should be one more with uh, some rock art. And so when we're hiking in these canyons and, um, and exploring these areas, it is just amazing when you come across some of the petroglyphs and they're just, they fill some of these places. And you know, a lot of times when you think about doing art, you're trying to get it so perfect, but you can see clearly that these guys were really just having fun and just trying to create something that they either saw or they imagined um, or try to get their point across. You see a lot of spirals out there on the rock art, a lot of characters that um, don't seem like they're um, people but a lot of those Kachina dolls don't really look like people either. They look um, really uh, creative. Um, so these, I've seen thousands of these petroglyphs in my, uh, in my uh, explorations and I've put it in my art. So now that you look at my art, uh, you'll notice that there's a lot of um, uh, things that just, I can't help but pick up some of these ideas and um, whatnot. Oh, there we go. So there's a picture of my son and I uh, with the petroglyphs. You can see some things that look like lizards and men, and you can see a lot of hands. It seemed like they put their hands um, over the thing and, and then they chipped it out to say I was here. Um, I saw that deep in the Grand Canyon. I saw a lot of hands like in these little caves and things. And I just wondered how hard it was for them to get there because it was really hard for me to get there. You got any more, Maria? Yeah, I'll bring up a couple more pictures in just a little bit. I just have a okay. couple more of like when we were exploring around there, but I'll get those in a minute. Okay. So this uh, project is, is just kind of, let me get the right page here. Where I'm going to be doing the Sun Kachina. You can do the Sun Kachina with me or you can uh, choose to do a different one. Um, let me get my page down. Hopefully you're enjoying the music. Not sure. Yeah, Rocco said he's loving the music. <laughs> this definitely puts you in the zone. And there's one thing about the Southwest that is for sure is that the sun is there. It is so hot in the Southwest in the summertime. There's no denying the sun. 
So basically, I want everybody to start out just with a circle. Now, you could do this with a compass or you could do it freehand. I'm going to do it freehand. And I'm not going to make it real big. I'm going to try to make it a, like about that big. And I'm doing this with a Posca pen so that you can see it, but um, you don't necessarily, you can do this with pencil on yours. Now it has, he has like a little cross over his head here. I'm doing this guy right here. You can't see him. And then a little thing like this. Now I've seen him done so many different ways. Uh, they're just like little slits for eyes, like little like rectangles and then a little triangle for a mouth. So he kind of looks happy when you see him. And then he has these feathers that come off the top. So you could just do these as like little sun rays. And like, let's say you go around and you do some sun rays. You could even do one at 12 o'clock, one at three o'clock, six o'clock and nine o'clock, and then do two, three, or one, two, one, two, one, two, one. Do something like this. And then feathers are easy. They just taper out. They start, see, they start like this. So just go around and do that to each one. So I'm doing this real loose. I had no plan whatsoever other than just try to do a cool little Chena doll. Add another one in here. So you can do your feathers even simpler, like kind of like little flower petals like this. If you're having a little trouble, that's what they kind of look like is little flower petals. There's also a uh, a character called Cocopelli. He's a flute player. You see him all over the place. And a lot of the art kind of goes, uh, runs through a couple of the tribes. It seems like Cocopelli might be one of them. You know, you have the Navajos and the Hopi and the Zunis and, you know, all these different ones. I'm not a, definitely not an expert, just a person that's been through the areas and met some of these people and seen their art. The jewelry is unbelievable. You'll see these little Indian ladies on the side of the road with this silver and turquoise jewelry and uh, really decorated. So there's my little guy. And now I'm going to make him um, have a little body like he's dancing or something. You could do just the face or you could do the, the body. He has something in his hand. I'm not sure what it is. They usually got like little shakers, like little maracas in their hand. But I'm going to do something different and I'm going to put a snake in his hand. You see my little snake? So there's no rules with this. Uh, looks like these guys were just getting really creative and, uh, you know, doing something to get some kind of idea across. And so I'm doing the same thing. I'm taking my artistic uh, license and I'm making my guy hold snakes. Since the sun sometimes looks like it has uh, sun rays that look like snakes. And I'm going to do his body like really running out of room. So everybody should be drawing their little Kachina doll. Maybe you have like a, uh, you've looked up the, some characters online and you found some. There's some real amazing ones. You know, my hope is that, you know, I'll get you researching some of these things and you'll be inspired and you might even be inspired to go to some of these places. Um, these places are definitely um, one of the more interesting. Mesa Verde was one of my favorite. That's the cliff dwellers. That's the Anasazi Pueblo culture. And um, Chaco is um, that same culture, which is due south of there. And those are some of the largest ruins. There we go. There's Mesa Verde right there. This is the cliff dwellers. This is the best photo I have. And of course, our son ruined it by making that face. I could have killed him that day. Yeah. 
And that's my 80 year old mother. She had to climb down a, a cliff to get to this place. I'm so proud of her. And I think your mom is on with us right now. I think she is. I, I th yes, I am Maria. Hi what mom, remember do? this day? I'm actually drawing tonight. All right. Awesome. I'm right. glad you are. We're, we're going to want you to sh share if you don't mind when you're ready, if you're ready, if you want to, we won't make you. We'll just but, encourage it. But that, you know, that was just such a cool trip. And, you know, there again, I just hope that, you know, some of these ideas will inspire you to go out into nature. Maybe there's some petroglyphs somewhere where you live that are maybe a little difficult to get to, but it's worth the trip to see them with your own eyes. So Sawyer Stroud is on here with us and Sawyer says, woo, woo I've been there. All right. Yeah. Good and, on And uh, Vivian asked if you could slow down just a little bit. All right. So um, I'll just go over this one more time to get everybody to catch up. You just want to do a circle and then a line across, a line up. There's two slits for eyes, a triangle for the mouth. And then, you know, just make lines going out like around a clock. And then you could turn them into feathers or you could turn them into like sun rays or you could turn them into uh, like flower petals. Either way, it'll give that same effect. It's like the rays of the sun. Uh, you could do the body or not. A lot of times you see this motif like on some pots. I've seen it in the cliffs. I've seen it on uh, textiles and I've seen it done a, a bunch of different ways. So there's no wrong way to do this. It's just uh, inspiration and let's just have fun. So I'm going to start painting um, and I'm going to do the colors like they have them here just uh, because I'm going to try to keep it similar, but this side's going to be red. I got my three colors. You know, I always use three colors to blend to make it more dynamic. Now I could just fill this in with red and that would be fine, but I'm going to make mine blended so that, um, so it looks cool. I'll do the darkest color first and then I'm blending in. It's like I got a little black on my pen, but it'll blend out. And, you know, the music, you know, I listen to music all day long or books on tape or online, and um, it really helps you get into the zone. That's why I kind of put this on today. You know, it just makes it uh, when you're looking at these pictures and especially the rock art, the rock art is just amazing because it wasn't easy to do. And it's kind of somber because, you know, these places were abandoned, uh, you know, many, many years ago, hundreds, if not thousands of years ago. And you're like, well, where did they go and why did they leave? Um, of course, some of the, uh, the Indians are still there. They just moved to like maybe a, a different area that had more water. I'm not really sure. But when you're out in the middle of nowhere and it's hot, and you had to hike really far to get to this place where there's some rock art. And you're like, wow, these people were here. And they left behind something amazing for us to see. And it just makes me wonder what they were thinking. And there's my little guy, he's coming together. All right, so this, um, his face is kind of like a turquoise color. That's one of the things I've noticed about um, a lot of this art of the Hopi and the Navajo. There's a lot of turquoise colors uh, that are used. And that might be just because that turquoise, they find it um, in that area of New Mexico, Arizona. Uh, they also find a lot of petrified wood, um, which is quite interesting. There's a whole area, it's called the Petrified Forest. It's in uh, Arizona. And it's on the way in between Flagstaff and Albuquerque. And um, it's one of Maria's favorite places. I love that place. And you're basically just driving around and there's just all these petrified 
logs everywhere. And it, they, uh, they made tools out of these logs, out of this, this rock. And um, it's literally everywhere. And so if you're in that area, uh, there's a lot of places that sell it. And, um, you know, they dig for it. But I have a every, picture to share. Oh, you do? The last time we were there. Yeah. So you can see how uh, this place is, but that's a tree log that's petrified. And it's literally everywhere. And so the Indians used to go there to harvest that stuff and, and make different kind of tools and materials out of it. And um, it's just hard to believe that a forest was once in this, this desert. And the logs are massive too. So they must have something must have, you know, like a flood or something buried them in mud or something, knocked them all down. I don't know. So I'm trying to get this turquoise color. I'm not sure if I'm getting it, but. And, you know, if you have any questions, uh, please put them in the chat. And um, even if it's about some of these sites uh, or if it's about art or tell us where you're joining us from. There again, I'm really trying to get into that inspiration side of it to give you more ideas to paint and, um, you know, feed off the other people's creativity. Because that's really what it's about is, you know, being inspired by things and then want to make them your own. Um, it's, you know, down in Mexico, uh, south of these areas, they're really into like wrestling and wrestling masks. And I can't help but think that um, these masks that were, uh, were painting t tonight are part of the reasons why these wrestling masks are so popular down in Mexico. A lot of these indigenous cultures did things that were similar to this. So, you know, you just wonder like where things came from. Well, it looks like, um, you know, a lot of this stuff looks very similar to the wrestling masks you see today. And they would have dressed up like this in ceremonies and things. It'd be great if we had a Native American Hopi guy here that could give us some more insight. Um, I know, that would have been cool. You know, I actually thought about that, but it would take a little more organizing. So Lisa M said, I've been to the Petrified Forest and I loved it too. Yeah. That's, that's great to hear. You know, one of the things I, you know, I noticed uh, this year in particularly when I'm traveling to some of these places, I usually see a lot of people from out of the country at all these parks and uh, uh, sites, which is great, but I don't see very Americans, very many Americans. And so this year when we were traveling, we went to a bunch of places and it was mainly filled with Americans that were going to their own sites. But even here locally, I mean, I'm often uh, surprised when I know that there's people that haven't been to places right close to home and they've never been there. Um, and there's places everywhere. We have places out near Blythe uh, by the Colorado River in California that they have these large uh, geoglyphs of these characters similar to like the Nazca lines in Peru. Uh, you know, and they're out in the middle of nowhere. They're not easy to get to. And well, remember we went to Chaco Canyon. That was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I found, I have one picture of you there if you want me to show it real quick. Yeah, sure. You and our niece Mia, this is, Chaco Canyon, a place that we had talked about going for a long time. It's a national historical park in Northwest New Mexico. It was definitely and the most difficult place that we've ever tried to get to. You had to go down a lot of dirt roads and stuff to get there. Yeah. And, um, but it was so amazing and it was insanely it, hot. This music, we, there was hardly anybody there. Yeah. This music reminds me of Chaco. Like you, you could almost 
hear the music of the, the past there. And these were multi-story buildings. So these buildings, some of them were four and five stories tall at one point. And a lot of them have collapsed now, but this doesn't do it justice. The whole place is massive. It, it's they started building it in 850 AD. So how many thousands of years ago was that? Well, it's, uh, 850 AD is 1,200 years. Yeah. So and it's probably older than that. My guess would be. No, we've been really lucky. We've gone to a lot of sites around the world. Um, is Cinnamon's here from uh, New Zealand? You know, I'm sure she's impacted by the Maori art. You know, we were when we were there. Um, and all the Polynesian cultures, for sure, um, they uh, have influenced me. All the tikis and, and masks and different things that they, uh, they create. You know, something as simple as, you know, the hula skirt and, you know, some of the weaponry and different things that I've seen in Polynesia. Um, and they're all different. They're all subtly different, but they're all subtly similar. That's the other interesting thing. Um, when I see these masks, it's hard for me to uh, not think about the tikis of Polynesia. Um, I was hiking in the forest in Tahiti and I was trying to get a vantage point to look at the waves and it was high up on this mountain and I found these tiki, these stone tikis that were carved, heavily eroded. Huh. I'm sure other people had seen them before, but they were just out in the middle of nowhere on top of this mountain and um, it was just so cool just knowing that somebody carved these things. And there must have been a reason. And there was another site in Tahiti I went to that um, was really hard to get to. My, my friend took me there. And uh, it was the center of the island. And they had all these carvings. And one of them was very similar to those spirals we saw in, um, in the rock art of uh, Arizona. And you just wonder, the, uh, some of the astrophysics that I study, uh, they think that all these cultures witness something in the sky and they all carved it into rock. And so that spiral might have been something visible in the sky, like a supernova or, you know, some type of energetic event. And that was one thing they had in common, even though they didn't know each other, that they would have seen this shape in the sky. So how's my mask coming along all right? Hopefully everybody's working and they're doing a happy mask. I love your mask. I think it's really, I like his feet. Yeah, I that's, always do. That's a, little, a, that's a brophy twist. Yeah. So see, I'm taking this idea and being inspired and then I'm just putting my own little twist on it. I have a question to everybody. Is If you're having trouble hearing, Drew, will you just write something in the chat because it's it's either his microphone or it's my computer. Kimberly said, I recently took a Hopi and Iroquois dance class Ooh. and one of the teachers had long braids. I asked him about his hairstyle and he said his braids show others that he is a veteran. I have a picture, he served in Vietnam, seemed fitting to share since it's Veterans Day. Oh, that's awesome, Kimberly. Yeah. Um, if you want to uh, share it, what you could do is email it to hello at brophyartacademy.com and I'll, I, I'll get it and share it during this, the rest of this session. You know, I, I, when I think about this and I, I had a discussion with some of my Hawaiian friends and um, you know, they they were, uh, you know, upset that, you know, so much of Hawaii has been taken over by, you know, people, foreigners and things. And it's a valid point. And uh, they're desperately trying to hold on to their language and their their culture. And my uh, thought to them was, well, they're actually very lucky 
that they're still so close to their culture that they still do have their language. They're still there um, because all of us came from some tribe at one point and, you know, probably all had some type of history similar to this and customs and art and things that, you know, we no longer have or we're detached from our culture. You know, my family comes from Ireland, but I've never been to Ireland and I don't know enough about it to, uh, to remember, but I, I do see a lot of Celtic art and Irish art and, and stories of the Druids and things like this. And it's, you know, something I'd probably, uh, it would do me well to learn, but we all have some type of history like that, that might be wise for us to uh, look into, to see where we came from. Um, s some people might have totally, you know, lost their, their culture. That's what I was saying to the Hawaiian, you know, at least they still know a little bit of their language and they're still in a, in a position to learn it and be part of it. Um, it's never too late, but um, I think we really have to respect uh, the, the different types of uh, people and, and ideas that were out there. And I think everybody knew something about the world and they had something to contribute. And it would be wise for us to listen and analyze the art and the stories and see where they're all similar. That was one of the things that I got out of my uh, studies of solar physics and things like that, that they really want to analyze some of these old legends and stories because they actually have more similarities than differences. And so they feel that they're trying to tell us something from the past. And it, that can be through art too. Um, they were heavily in, influenced by weather and um, the sky, the stars. You can see my feathers. I'm doing black and in, uh, in purple for my feathers. These are the tips of the feathers. But when you learn some of these stories and things that, you know, maybe there's a little bit of truth or some type of message in there. That's what a lot of these physicists were saying, especially in the rock art. Um, they were saying that it, it, it took a lot of effort to carve these designs into the rock. So, um, it was a message either for somebody of their time or a message that we can uh, maybe translate today. So why don't we go around um, Maria and see how everybody's doing and. Okay. Yeah, if anybody wants to share, please either hit the raise hand button so we can spotlight you or write it in the chat, whatever is easiest for you. We'd love to see what you're working on. And while we're waiting to see who wants to share, a couple questions. One from Kate, are we painting on canvas or the sketch paper? And um, with every paint party, you paint on anything you want. Um, just everybody's kind of doing whatever works best for them. Yeah, we do that just because I know that people have trouble getting materials. Um, we've seen people paint on uh, canvas to paper to wood to cardboard to trash cans. Yeah, <laughs> paint on anything. Um, yeah, I don't want to dictate what people paint on just because they, you know, it's a little bit more difficult for some people to get materials. The, um, what was I going to say? There we go. Somebody, uh, Vivian wanted to know how you made the light blue. The light blue, I had um, the light blue with a little bit of the light green. And I just mixed it to try to get a little turquoise color. And it actually worked pretty good. Let's see if I can get this closer. And you see that just little hints of green in it. Uh, Brioni asked, do you write stories in your art? Or no, that was Rowan. Rowan asked, do you write stories in your art? Um, they kind of start to have like a story feel to them because, um, 
you know, I, I try not to try so hard and just let it come out and be fun and free flowing. But it's hard to imagine, you know, I mean, this little guy, all of a sudden you could write a whole story about him. You know, what's he doing with these snakes and why is he barefoot? And what's his name? And um, so I guess I do kind of have a little story in my head, but uh, maybe I should write it down. I think every, just about every piece of art you do does have a story. You might not write it down, but there's always a story there from somewhere. Okay, let's go to, we're going to go to London and then we're going to go to Cinnamon. So we'll start with London first. London, if you could unmute and we're going to spotlight your video and get ready to show us your art. Can you unmute yourself? Hey, London. Oh, wow. Look at that. That is good. That is awesome. And are you using Posca pens? Um, no, I'm actually part of the Girl Scout troop that's here. Oh, cool. And so we all just got these other types of paint pens. They look like they work really well. Awesome. Can you show us one more time? Hold it up one more time. That's awesome. Thank you. Good job. Yeah. So yeah, the um, what a what a great field trip some of these sites would be for the Girl Scouts. I know, right? Um, it's so educational. And it's just in, you know inspirational and you know hiking in some of these places. I mean, it's very beautiful seeing our country, and you know anywhere where there's something interesting from the past to look at. You know, All right, we're going to hop over to Cinnamon now, going uh -huh. to New Zealand. Hi. We can Hi. see the ceiling there. <laughs> hey, so that Cinnamon. was my sketch. Oh, I like and, it. And you talked about the sun dude, so I've added him on both sides of my canvas, and I've done this. Oh, look, you got a whole bunch of characters in there. Yeah. You know, and Cinnamon... I, I thought about you when we were going to do this because I know you like doing characters and I was like, wow, this would, this is going to be great. She's going to see all these wild and crazy characters that they do. What I love about your character sketches, they're, they look like they're just in motion. Yeah. You've really, you really <laughs> captured a personality. That's so cool how you did that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, had you seen uh, Hopi Indian art before? No, this is my first time looking at it and things, but in New Zealand, when it comes to um, our culture of like the Māori things, we still learn the languages in school and welcome people with Māori songs if they are new to our schools. With oh, that, yeah, that is so great. You know, when we were there, um, we met some forestry guys and we were near Gisborne and um, these guys were really big Māori guys and they're still had their faces tattooed and really intimidating looking and dylan was just a little boy he he just sat with them and was talking to them and they were the nicest guys and it was just such a pleasure meeting these guys with the with the facial tattoos if anybody out there hasn't uh looked into the maoris uh of new zealand uh their art uh, especially the tattoos are um just amazing yeah that was a really cool experience. Yeah, and cinnamon. I'm sure you're you're immersed in all of that, and um, yeah, we enjoyed the cowrie trees and gosh, so much there in New Zealand. So every place has you know something unique. Um, sort of Australia with the Aborigines, and you know Polynesia with all the tiki culture. Um, you know, and then like we've been to Egypt and all these places. Um, one of the things I really like about all these cultures is they were all about art. And um, yeah, so. The art is what tells the story, really. Okay, let's go over to Brioni. Brioni, we're gonna spotlight your video if you're ready. Hi there. And can you unmute yourself and show us the work, what you're working on? Let's see. Oops, I think I accidentally muted you. Can you unmute Whoa. yourself again? That's good. There we go. Hi. Oh, wow. That is amazing. It kind of looks like a. Working. Oh, 
You just gotta try to, on a scratch piece of paper, try to get it going. Sometimes those markers can be hard to get started. But yeah. uh, your picture's looking really good. It looks like, you know, it's kind of like a flower with a face on it, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, good job. Yeah. That is awesome. So we, I get, we had a, a whole Girl Scout troop on here. I wonder if she's part of the same troop. I don't know. Yes. Yep. Yeah, you are. Well, yeah. thanks for joining us. Yeah. Glad to I am you. too. All right. Okay. So I was wondering why we had so many uh, young ladies on here. Now I know. Um, I'm going to read a couple comments and then we'll go to Kendall and Vivian after I read a couple comments. Brit Tony, our girl Brit Tony said that she had friends come visit last week and randomly asked her to design and paint their camper. Whoa. She said, with confidence, I gladly accepted the challenge and painted my first mural six and a half feet by seven and a half feet with Posca pens in 24 hours. Yes. Wow. And she said, thank you so much for teaching us and sharing your knowledge. Super stoked. Oh, that's awesome. Love it. I, I want to see a picture of that. I'm sure you probably posted it on Instagram. I don't, I didn't see it, but I'm going to look on your Instagram and see if I can find it. Kyra wrote, I feel like we've lost so much in the arts from the past when civilizations disappeared. Yeah, but you know what? We're bringing it back right now. Yeah. Just in one small group at a time. And I, you know, really, when I was in Egypt, I couldn't believe the amount of artisans that were doing everything there from we were in some of the tombs and you could see where the first group of artists prepared the wall and then somebody sketched an idea and then some other master artist corrected the sketch and then somebody got it just perfect and then a sculptor came and carved it. And I was just imagining how crazy it was that this uh, place, the amount of artists that it took to create all this magnificent artwork and structures and uh, hieroglyphics was just astounding. It's almost like the whole culture was doing art. And what would that look like? Um, I think it's a, a very worthwhile endeavor to to learn how to be creative and to let go and that's why i'm not trying so hard to teach whereas i'm more trying to inspire and give you the permission just to have fun so you know this little exercise is is you know pretty easy everybody's doing it and making this little uh sun character come to life in your own way and so, go ahead do you, do you mind if i share a picture of what you were just talking about in egypt just for a second oh no problem so and I, i'll just tell a quick story about this photo this is a photo of us in king seti's tomb i almost went to jail for taking this photo this is drew with a gentleman named foster gamble and i don't know if any of you have ever heard that movie thrive but he's one of the producers and the main, uh, the person who made that movie. Um, but this was one of my favorite places because throughout this tomb, there was artwork that was finished, but there was also walls where it, the artwork had only been sketched on the walls and they hadn't painted it yet. And uh, it was just really incredible. Yeah, and it was, it was actually shocking to me that there's places that you're not allowed to photograph for some reason. That's why I almost went to jail because I wasn't allowed to photograph in there, but I pulled my phone out and I thought I was being really slick and snapped a picture. And next thing you know, I was in trouble. So uh, Drew had to pay a fine, quote unquote. He had to basically uh, save me. Yeah. <laughs> did, not, did not want to end up in jail in Egypt. That would not be fun. But, okay. um, but the, you know, that site was deep underground. Like you would have never, it was in these mountains. You would have never known it was there. And 
it was super deep underground. Every every tomb was uh, built into this cliffside, and um, I'm sure there's thousands, tens of thousands more of those tombs in Egypt. Um, the Egyptologist had told us uh, that less than 10% of Egypt has been excavated. So okay, so we have a lot of people that want to share. So I'm going to hop over, right now we're going to hop over to Kendall, Vivian, and Sophia. And uh, we have a, we're, we'll get to everybody, but I'm going to start with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself. I'll spotlight you, and if you could just show your work, and and then we'll just move quickly. Hello, it's this is Kendall. <laughs> oh wow, Kendall, I love it. That is Thank so you. awesome. That is so awesome. Good job. Wow. So so the goal today, we've got to get rid of all the white. So just keep going, and uh, keep having fun with it. Okay, mm -hmm. now now we're going to go over to Vivian. Um, and uh, like I said, we have a lot of people that want to share, so I'm just going to move quickly. Vivian, there we go. Hi. Hey, how's it going over there? Can we see what you're working on? Show us what you're working on. Oh, look at that. Can you hold it closer to the... That is so yeah. good. What oh, I love that's... is every, everybody's is similar but different. It's so great that we have like all the different colors and everybody puts their own personality. Really good job. I, I love your choice of colors though. That's awesome. Good job. Yeah. Okay, now we're gonna go to- I, I, think, I, I think the other girl wanted to share hers. Oh, okay. We're go going back? back, sorry. Hold on. My, my mistake. Wait a minute. I'm coming back. I wanted to finish mine first. Can we just see it a little yeah, bit? Yeah, show us what you, how far you got so far. Because everybody, everybody's could be moving slow too. Oh yeah, yours is coming together though. Look at that. That's perfect. You've got the perfect start. She's Vivian. She's Ariane. Oh, okay. Okay. So you're doing the same colors as your shirt. It's matching you. <laughs> Awesome. All right, girls. Thank Good job. you. Thanks Keep for going. sharing. Okay. Now we're going to go to Sophia. Sophia. There we go. Hi. So this is mine. How oh, did you is... do that so fast? Oh my gosh. That's She's amazing. Having... Yeah, you you did good. I'm having to talk, so I go a little bit a little bit slower. But that looks good. So now you can do stuff in the background if you want. That's my, that was my question. Yes. Okay. So you can do anything you hey, want. what's up, Brian? Yeah. I, I would even think of some of those petroglyph designs or patterns. No. All right. That, what's the name of these? The pink pens? No, are, like, what are we drawing? This is a Hopi Kachina uh, doll. Oh, OK. A so, kachina, yeah. So it's, it's like a little uh, character that they make. And so they have a whole lot of them that they, um, that they uh, created and they're super old. They've been doing it for a long time, lots of colors. And you can look them up on the internet and see all the art that they do. And really, you know, everybody, I just, I hope it just inspires you to, to learn more about uh, not just these people, but they're again, any indigenous culture they have so much to offer from, you know, from the Americas to Australia to Africa, everywhere I've been, uh, there's just people doing amazing art. All right, let's hop over and say hi to Mickey Graff. How do you spell it? Hi, Mickey. Hi. Show us what you're working on. This. Oh yeah, look at that. And you got the hand coming out. I love how you did that. I'm blown away by how fast some, some of you all paint. My gosh. Yeah. That is good. <laughs> good all job. Right. All right. And I, I heard the question, how do you spell Hopi? Um, H-O-P-I. And then Kachina is K-A-C-H-I-N-A. 
Oh, I love this, the other face too. You, you're going fast. It's like a sunshine face. This yeah. one's my mom. Oh, your, your mom, mom did, did that? that? Good Is job, she, mom. Tell your mom we're, we're proud of her. Yeah. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> This is great having so many, everybody's done, they're, they're so good because they're all just subtly different. And that's what was so good about this exercise that everybody could make it their own. Um, okay, we're gonna go over to Jim now. Jim, if you can unmute yourself and we're gonna spotlight your video, show us, there you are. Hey. Good to see you again. Yes, I'm loving these paint parties. Thank you so much. Yeah, let, let's see yours. This is what I'm working on tonight so far. All right, he's looking good. I'm dropping a bunch of feathers and stuff in the back. And then this is the one I finished from last week. Oh, wow, that looks awesome. Oh, wow. Inside of there is the yin and the yang kind of subliminal message. So these classes are awesome. Sorry to see them go. Thank you so much for doing them. We'll be looking forward to the next one. So thank cool. you. Yeah, no problem. And we'll be doing more things. Um, we just got, we're going to take a break for Thanksgiving and, and stuff. And um, yeah, we'll be back. Thanks, Jim. So thanks again. No problem. It's really good seeing the ones from last week and, you know, previous weeks. Uh, I know people, some people do them fast and then some people, you know, take their time. Let's go see what Evan, the artist, is up to. Evan, Evan we are coming to spotlight you. What's uh -huh. up? Vote for me. I already voted for you. What's up, Evan? <laughs> I, uh, this is... Yeah, look at your guy. I, I, I did this upside down. It was supposed to look like this like the face that's all right but then, because but then i ended up putting the hands this way and i didn't realize that i was doing it the wrong way so well good save so, it's a happy happy accident yeah and then i did this the other day oh wow whoa the joker oh my gosh that's kind of scary looking is that is that like a evil clown like J joker guy this is pennywise Pennywise, oh yeah, right on. Cool, thanks, well, you, Evan. You look like you've been busy, Evan. He's always, always busy. Great work. Well, I'm just, I'm just adding my uh, shirt to my character. All right, now we're gonna hop over to Andrea M to share Tessa's work. If you can unmute yourself and let's see, we're coming over to you well, there. Hello. hello. Thanks for doing this. She said if I have to show hers, that's Tessa, that I have to show mine. So there's mine. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, look at hers. You guys that's... are great, but like, man, what great figure structure. Oh my God. Thank you. Yeah. So, so you must draw a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I do. You're definitely professional. So you're so you're probably going to be a fashion designer, I can tell. Yeah, I'm going to be an artist of some kind. <laughs> yeah. You definitely already are. My yeah. God. Thank you. I like how you're hiding behind your sketch pad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And let's see moms again. Yeah. I can't... Oh, yeah, there we go. Awesome. Yeah, and that's what yeah. I wanted to show her. <laughs> are you all having fun together? We're having yeah. a great time. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, oh, no so problem. Great. And hopefully you get out and here. see one of these sites one day. Yeah. This is great. You know, we um, every week's a little different. And uh, this this is a great crowd of uh, folks. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying the music, too. It's just kind of setting the tone. I don't know if everybody can hear it very well. But I'm just going for it with mine. Um, Every time at these paint parties, I try not to um, get anything ahead of myself. I kind of have a basic idea and, and just kind of go for it here so that I'm kind of working under the same restraints that you are, which is uh, trying not to try so hard, just letting go, uh, going with the idea that we chose for the day and uh, just trying to make it look cool, get rid of all the white and um, 
see where it ends up. And I'm having I'm having fun with mine. I'm okay, we only have about five minutes left. So if anybody else wants to share, um, raise your hand or write it in the chat. Oh, here we go. Mary Lee, Mary Lee. We're going to come to Mary Lee in a second. And then after Mary Lee, we will go to Lucas, Aaron and Lucas. Okay. All right. All right Mary Lee. You I'm can unmute my... yourself. Okay. Yeah. Hi. There we go. Wow. Oh, yeah. look at yours. That's awesome. Well, I, I was moving pretty fast there, you know, trying to keep up. I'm not done, but you know, I'm crazy. making my guy, my guy's <laughs> arms and hands blue. So you just like your feet are blue. Yeah. yeah. It's Where just kind you... of messy. Right? <laughs> Where yeah. are you located, Mary Lee? Florida. 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 Melbourne, awesome. Florida. Yeah. Malabar. Yeah, I love it, Melbourne. Central. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I get used Thank to go surfing there a lot when I was growing up. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a cool place, you know. That's one thing that's that's neat, especially about uh, our country, is like there's so many different great places to travel to, and um, you know, Florida is definitely one of the cool places. I like okay. all the, all the uh, pools, all the the big crystal pools that they have all over Florida. Um, it's another great place to look up. All right, go ahead. Okay, so we're gonna go to Aaron. Um, here we go. Hi, Hello. Lucas. Right, Lucas hi, Lucas. Likes to share what he's working on. Oh wow, look at that. That's so what do you get? Awesome. A plastic lid. Yeah, it's a lid from a container. That's great. That's great upcycling. Up yes. <laughs> so Love it. Something to paint. So, and I'm not working on, uh, I pre-primed some canvases the other day, but I did use my Posca pen to sketch out uh, the start wow. of this with what I was working on. So, and it, it went a lot faster. Now I'm trying to go back in with uh, my regular acrylics kind of on top of it, but yeah that that is great technique that's really beautiful because you know the posca pens can get your idea started so fast and you get those subtle blends and then the, the regular acrylics just start adding texture and highlights and god that's really beautiful nice work it, it made it go so much faster i was like why haven't i been doing this all along like i got i mean i started just tonight you know and the background was done but i could get it down really fast yeah and it, it just feels so much it's so rewarding when you can get some, an idea out and completed yes for sure yeah. and then that way you feel like you can um you're you're more ambitious to do an, a larger project mm -hmm. versus you know if you start something and you can't complete it you're you get frustrated and you say i'm no good at this and um so good job that was really nice seeing it let's go say hi to Brittoni. Yeah. Tony. What's going on over there? I think you kind of have a a low uh, Wi-Fi connection. <laughs> we can't hear you. And we can't hear you. Can What's you just your... hold your art up if you have something to show? She's not muted. I don't know why the sound's not working. Oh, wow. Look at hers. She's got like, she's going big. Love it love it oh yeah there's a sketch lots awesome. of hair <laughs> oh look at that that looks really beautiful nice nice blending did I you do I that could... from last week was that from last week's paint party awesome good job all right sorry we can't hear you i don't know what's going on it's a technical it's a yeah. zoom thing but nice seeing your beautiful face yeah all right, now we're gonna go over and say hi to Marielle. Marielle, hi. Hi. Hey, Marielle, how's it How going over there? Good. Can we see your painting? I'm not good yet, but yeah, here it is. Oh, look at that. Wow. I love the hands and feet. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, are you having fun? Yeah, yeah. All right. My mommy's. 
Whoa, look at mom. Wow. She's right here. Good job, mom. <laughs> Good I'm job. Girl, I'm the Girl Scout troop leader. Oh, all right. Well, it, well yeah. it's nice having all the girls here. I hope they're all having a good time. And yeah. um, so fun. We uh, we found out about you from a friend of mine who I guess used to nanny maybe one of your uh, family members down in Bethesda. Oh, cool. <laughs> so yeah, so she put us in touch with you. So oh, yeah, that's so cool. That. Yeah, well, thanks. Small it's world. Really nice having you all here. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you know, it's it's just so nice and it really just shows how small of a world it is that you know we're able to get here online and everybody's all over the place. Um I wonder if CJ's with us in Japan. Can I can do one more time. We need to see some Maria, can you go to this whoever that is? I'm trying to figure out who that is. Sophia. 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 Uh, hang on. Let me. I can hear everybody, but I can't see all the. Well, boxes. it's the controls, so it takes. Okay, we're. I'm coming back to Sophia. Hi, Sophia. Hi. So this is what I drew. Oh yeah. This that is. Yeah, you got another little guy there, huh? That and looks I love, good. Like, the, the background buildings. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. You have a good artistic eye. So you, so you kind of saw some of those ruins that we saw, kind of like building the ruins in the background? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. And that, you know, it really, when you're at those places, you can almost imagine these people in those buildings and they're all perfect and they're all dressed up and cooking and I don't know, it's just kind of neat. You're, as an artist, your imagination just really starts to go. So good job. Okay, so let's see. Um, we're gonna go to Kate, then we're gonna go to CJ, cause CJ is here. All and right. then we're gonna go back to Cinnamon and then we're gonna call it a day cause we're going over time. All right. But for some reason, is it just me or did this hour go really fast? It, it went fast, but everybody's having fun and that's the most important thing. Yeah. Okay, so we're going over to Kate. Kate, I'm going to spotlight you right now. Hi. Hey, Kate. Um, this is what I've painted so far. Oh, yeah. I Look at that. It's hard to see it because it's in pencil. Um, I, um, I'm making my um, little doll. Yeah, I, I can see it. It's going to be great. So just sit there, maybe put some music on and have fun painting and uh, just try not to try so hard and whatever comes out, just let it out. Good job, Kate. <laughs> I'll tell you, this is a good bunch of gun, bunch of people there. Everybody's doing a good job. Yeah. And I think this, this exercise is really good. You know, there's, you know, you can make this your own. You could have just done the face. I, I really like how Sophia did the background and added the ruins in there. Let's go say hi to CJ. What's up? Hi guys. Hey, CJ. Good to see you Great in see the you. live since I see your Instagram all the time. I'm always <laughs> jealous of all the waves you're catching. Oh yeah, it's been fun for a while. We've had a lot of typhoons. <laughs> so oh, here's my little guy. Oh, he is so good. I love the <laughs> colors, like the gray. I love the like the grays that you got. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to Mesa Verde and we've traveled around that area and there you're right. There's just a totally different energy that you feel there. And it's really amazing. Yeah. And, and you know what? And once you've been, been there, you're just like, gosh, how, like, how did I not know about this place? And then you're like there and, and it, there's just so many beautiful places. I'm sure there in Japan, there's some amazing ruins and stuff as well. Oh, this island is covered in, I think it's 200 castle ruins. We can see castles everywhere we go, like all, like the ruins of them. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I would love that. Are they like, yeah, so cool. are some of them like megalithic stones too, like big giant stones? Yeah, there's actually, um, they used to cut out some of the reef to, to uh, turn these castles into these giant castle walls. And they were able to trace back like what part of the reef they were taking it from, because obviously they don't want to do that anymore. Yeah. But, um, 
one of the major castles burned down about a year ago it was Shuri Castle. And it was just absolutely devastating.